Thanks for watching Aquarium Tech today. Today I was going to do a video on uh, fluorescent compacts and power compacts. They're based, they're essentially the same thing. I mean, there might be some minute differences, but really, uh, more or less, the terms, those two terms, are uh, abused and confused, as you could say. Okay. So, anyways. Um, before I even get started today, one of my local fish stores, Nahaki's Aquarium, was nice enough to let me uh, borrow this uh, power, this big old uh, power compact fixture, and I s sincerely appreciate that. And for any of you guys that live here in uh, Florida, they are here in Brevard County, and they're off US One, uh, right by the 192 Causeway, just uh, just north of it. So, um, awesome store, awesome people, really appreciate it, guys. Uh, oh, and by the way, they have a website, www.nahackeysaquarium.com. I'll put it in the description or, or something, okay? Anyways, um, so today, doing fluorescent compacts and power compacts. And like I said, really, they're pretty much the same. I mean, it really, you can, the, if you ask somebody the difference, I mean, Two people give you different answers, so. But anyways, we'll start off with power compact. And actually, I'll start off just generally about both. Back in the day, okay, th these, okay, power compacts came out for T5s and all this other good stuff that's out today, like LEDs. Basically, during that time, all you had was T12s, I think you had T8s, metal halides, and power compacts, okay? So, you know, the T12s and T8 and metal halides you could, but of course, if any of you have had them, you'll know the complications and the uh, stuff that you have to deal with when owning one. So your only other option was these power compacts. Of course, you had a, a VHO T12s, you know, the very high output T12s, but of course, those are really inefficient. And, uh, you know, usually you'd have to have a bunch of fixtures on there. But anyways... Really, when really the power compacts were the first step into this new generation of lighting, um, and a as we get into it, you'll see that they they share a lot in common with T5s and whatnot. So that's kind of the that's kind of a, sh a brief history, you know. So they they were really a good lighting source, uh, especially if you do not want to go with metal halides. Of course, they still have their limitations, and we'll get into that. So. But anyways, just going, just starting off here on the fixture, uh, as you can notice, I mean, if you look on this fixture, it's, it was, they were probably some of the first fixtures that started to come complete with stuff, like, like a, a decent reflector, you got your moon lights on here, you've got different, uh, switches here, I, I know you can't see it, but it's not a big deal, you got, you know, you got three switches, you know, for moon lights, uh, and then your Atenix and your whites. Of course, I mean, they may have not originally, when they hit the market, came with that, but they were, they were really the first step towards this new quality uh, st fixtures like that. Before I go further, you'll probably see me comparing them to T, or I'll be comparing them a lot to T5s because they're somewhat similar in their output and their performance. As I continue here, let me talk about the bulb a little bit. And by the way, uh, if you guys in the hackies are watching this, you will know that I actually went, out, went ahead and cleaned this for you. If you notice, this doesn't look like any normal bulb that you've probably seen for any of the other uh, videos. They, they have very unique bulbs, okay? And that goes with the compact, the fluorescent compacts too. As you can see, the it's not round. I mean, the, the actual bulb parts are round, but Okay, let's zoom in here. But you can see there's only one end. This end doesn't have anything on it. One end that plugs in. All right, and this is the normal thing you're gonna see with power compacts. It's just the four pin arrangement. Okay. Now they have square. I think I've seen a square one too. I've seen two pin, and I've seen the two pins like split and stuff. I've seen a couple different variations, but this is the one you're going to most commonly find. Of course, another obvious thing to note is that there's two bulbs. There's two pieces of glass. That's one bulb. Alright. 
And I believe they make this in about as many variations as they do T5. Another thing to note is these these bulbs, they use a lot more power, and, then, and the sizes, they come in as well, okay? Now, I believe, if I'm not mistaken with these power compacts, they come in 24-inch, and then I think 34 inch or something like that. Really, they don't have as many bulb sizes as they do like T5s and all the other bulbs. Of course, they have like mini ones, but the, but technically, if you want to get into it, those are the ones that most people classify as fluorescent compacts, and we'll get into that in a little bit, but we're talking about power compacts here. They only come in uh, 24 and uh, I think, I'm pretty sure it's 34 or 36 inch or something like that, so. Uh, most, especially since most tanks are, you know, most of the bigger tanks you'll be using this on, or the medium-sized tanks, are going to be 48 inch, which you'll commonly see is what this fixture is right here. I believe this one's a 48 inch, and it's got, and it'll have either two or four of these in here, 24 inch. So, as you can see, that's what this one is. It's a four, it's a four bulb, uh, 48 inch fixture. So. But anyways, now comparing with the uh, power stuff, like for instance, this bulb is a 65 watt. A 24 inch T5 is only going to be 24 watts, okay? And that's a high output. Um, but if you want to really compare, since they, since this has two in there, a 25, uh, I'm sorry, if, if you want to put this up against two 24 inch, uh, T5s, it's still only using 48 watts of power, okay? And this is using 65 watts. Not only that, T5s, they usually put out a little bit more light, too. And it's using less power. So, with T5s, they're, they're going to be more efficient, and they're going to use a little less power, okay? And you can just tell that by heat, too. Um, just something to note that I really should be in every one of my lighting videos, that um, light... Okay, or I'm sorry, anything that really deals with energy, period. If, if, if you have a lighting fixture and it's creating a lot of heat, heat means inefficiency, okay? Because heat is energy, all right? What heat is is wasted energy in lighting fixtures, okay? Because when you buy a lighting fixture, you know, you want it to put out light, not heat. And not only that, heat is the light, uh, enemy of all light. So that's something else to add is that these fixtures and the bulbs themselves usually don't last as long as T5s either. Now T5s haven't been around that long either, so, um, but, but I'm not saying these aren't bad, okay? They're, they're not a bad choice, it's just that they are ra becoming rather outdated. They do make, I think, VHO ones, very high output ones, I think they're like 96 watts for these 24, or 22 inch ones, so. Just something to note. T5s are probably going to be a better way to go when buying bulbs, but I was just going to show you guys here power compacts. And another thing just to note about them, you'll also notice due to this uh, inefficiency, you'll also notice that these fixtures have uh, almost every single one has fans on them. Now T5s, uh, part of why they don't have uh, as many fans per like fixture. I don't know how to uh, quite say this, but if you look at uh, a same size fixture of a T5 compared to a something comparable power compact, the power compact one will not only have more fans, but it'll probably still run hotter because the T5 is you know more efficient and the design of the actual fixture since. T5s are newer, of course the fixtures are going to incorporate newer designs, you know, they can rely a little more on the actual design of the heat dissipation of the actual fixture and, you know, their built-in heat sinks. And me, I don't like the fans. The fans that will come in most of these, that really all they do is make noise. Now, I'm not saying they won't cool the fixture a little bit, but for what they do, I mean, it's really not worth it. I mean, they use power and they make noise, they keep you up at night. I'm not a big fan of them. If if they were actually a little bit bigger and had a little bit more power to them, they, they would work. The problem is they're just tiny computer fans and they just can't push enough air, all right? So, but of course that's probably more of an opinion thing. I'm sure I'll have a ton of people disagreeing with me on that one, but, but anyways, that's kind of power compacts for you. 
Um, they they can't they couldn't support most things that T5s can support. Like I said, they will use a little bit more power. They're a little less efficient and they're bigger. And like I said, the the fixtures don't usually don't last as long, and neither do the bulbs. And the ballast are usually more expensive than like a T5. T5s at least last time I looked. Because like I know with a T5, you know most T, most T5s now this is highly depending. Um, to replace the ballast is usually, uh, you know, you might as well replace the ballast instead of get a new fixture, where it's just that, with the fluorescent compact, you know, you have to replace the fixture, because you're going to spend the same amount on a ballast, so. Anyways, I'll show you a little de demonstration here, alright. Now only two of these I got working right now, so, let's see, let's fire her up. Alright. Now that's a 10k bulb, alright, 65 watt 10k, or 10,000k rather, and then the next one is an attendant. I don't know if you can hear the fan, but it's on, <laughs> making noise. But like I said, as you can see, they do put off a good amount of light, they're just not, you know, as efficient or as bright as T5s. In fact, they're already getting hot, so, as a T5, it'd take a, while, a little while, so... Alright. So not so they're not bad, but but they are rather becoming a little outdated, so. And especially back in the day, they were an excellent choice. Especially because I I was never a big fan of metal allies. Anyways, here I'll move on here to fluorescent compacts, even though they're the same thing. And anyways, the only Real fluorescent compact I have right now is in the UV sterilizer, which I'm not going to take out and obviously show. And then the other one I have is, a, and also I'll talk about self ballasting bulbs, uh, and I'll explain that in a minute. But here is a uh, compact fluorescent. So, as you can see, really the difference is that they're usually just smaller, that's really the only difference. Oh, and another thing I meant to mention about, this goes for power compacts or fluorescent. The diameter of the actual bulb and the tube makes a difference. Like, j just like we have T12s, T8s, and T5s. Same thing goes for these, okay? Another thing here I'll, I'll show that usually happens on compact fluorescents rather than power compacts is that the bulb is usually has a curve up there. As you saw with the other ones, there was no curve. It was just two straight bulbs. See, on this it's a curve, so it's all one bulb. Like I said, they're pretty much the same thing. There's not really not much difference with them. The pin arrangement's usually different. This one's kind of screwed in and it's hard to get it out. So, um, I'm not going to really screw it out, but if you can just imagine that other bulb, it's the same thing with the power compact bulb, except it usually just has two straight pins, or it'll have them uh, kind of divided on the very edges of them. It'll have like a centerpiece. I'll give you a little demonstration of this light. I think this one's around 60... Oops, I didn't plug it in. <laughs> this this bulb right here is around 60, 6700 Kelvin for color temperature. And this is a 13 watt. And so as you can see, it's got about the same intensity, about the same in brightness as the other power compacts. Maybe a little bit more, but like I said, it is a T5 power compact. At least I believe it is. Alright. Moving on to self-ballasting bulbs, okay? Those are technically power or fluorescent compacts as well, but I like to call them uh, self ballasting bulbs just to be a little more specific and so you know what I'm talking about and you've seen these before if you've watched any of my other shows like uh, I believe I had them in the incandescent to show to show you how to use be able to grow plants with a standard Aquion hood that has the uh, the incandescents so but those are and I've called them self ballasting but technically they are power part of the power compact family so what they are is they're basically just power compacts that screw in to a regular light bulb socket and, that, and they really don't uh, the standard ones here now this is a standard one the only one I've only found them in 10 and 20 watts before 
but I found them in a few different color temperatures. Only, actually, only about three. The only ones I've ever found them in is like 10K, uh, a 10,000 10, Kelvin, a Tinic, and uh, the Color Max ones, which I think are like 8,000 K. Actually, I think I've seen a plant one that was like 6,700 K too. As you can see, it's pretty. It looks just like the other one, except it's got. Uh, two bulbs on it as you can see two of those curved bulbs this one is a 20 watt and it's got about the same intensity and brightness as the other ones though something to mention about these self-ballasting bulbs that i've seen different between any of the other power compacts or fluorescent compacts is that they usually last a lot longer and that they're a little more uh I, I would like to say efficient. That, that's just something I, I think I've noticed. It might be my mind playing tricks on me. And I haven't actually measured it, but I'm pretty sure that's actually the case. So, there's a little background on fluorescent compacts and power compacts for you. And I'll give you a little demonstration with this. This is a standard Acreon hood. Okay. And as you can see, one, one of these is a 10,000K bulb. Now, now, each of them, one of them is a 10K and 10,000K, and another one's an antenna. So that's why it looks, looks like it does. All right? So as you can see, they're, they're all pretty similar. All share pretty much the same characteristics. Really just different forms of how they are plugged in. That's about it for them, just in conclusion. Uh, self-ballasting ones, I would still suggest to this very day if you don't want a switch fixture. With the, with the other compact fluorescents and the other power compacts, they are a great light, but they're becoming a little outdated. Uh, I guess that's about it for today. Alright, thanks for tuning in.